Welcome to the Witch Doctor Starter Survival Guide for Diablo 3 Patch 270 and Season 23. I don't know if anyone's gonna watch this, but damn it, we don't leave anybody out. No, I'm just playing. Um, if you don't know about this series, uh, we give you recommendations from level one all the way until you get your six piece set bonus and then we let you leave the nest and send you on your merry way. It's like a launch night guide, basically. Witch Doctor actually has an incredible time, an incredibly easy time leveling and an incredibly easy time with the GR20 clear and beyond and we'll get into the challenges and how to build and everything like that to make your night easy all i ask is that you leave a like on the video as it really does help the youtube algorithm it's a constant battle with these dudes all these videos are based on having the challenger of cash um, when I'm filming this, I don't know when the season starts. The season starts on a Friday and the challenge rift resets on a Monday. So whatever the season starts, whatever Friday that is, don't do your challenge rift that week. Wait till the season's active, then do your challenge rift. That way you have all these beautiful goodies waiting for you. We can unlock all of our professions. We can buy stuff from the vendor. We can reroll items, make items, craft anything. We have level one blood shards. We can do a hope of cane. It's really an amazing starter care package for this season. Let's start off with leveling skills for Witch Doctor. Now, Witch Doctor is one of the fastest, I would say this is the fastest massacre bonus leveling class in the game because of the haunt ability you get at level 12, right? It just continuously chains mobs together kills them it's really power It's a 4,000 damage dot that automatically finds another target once you get lingering spirit at level 35 i mean it just takes off like crazy and then you have your pets so you're going to use sp haunt spam and then you're going to use pets like zombie dogs you can get zombie dogs at level four and the first rune you get is rabbit dogs rabbit dogs does 120 percent of your weapon damage so you know blood's going to go big two handers for leveling um, as poison damage over three seconds. This also synergizes with the Helltooth set when you get it. It's a beautiful synergy, man. I also like to rock the Garg at 19 as well. And of course, the first rune you get is the best one, right? The 585 damage cleave, which Doctor pops off for leveling. As if that wasn't enough, you get Rush of Essence at 36, which gives you 100 mana back when you use Haunt. So you have infinite mana. You have tankiness from your pets. Your pets do all the damage, kind of keep everything away from you. And this also buffs Spirit Barrage. So you definitely want to use Spirit Barrage if you have the mojo. Well, blood, how are we going to get the mojo, man? We can't just get it out of thin air, can we? Which brings us to level one Witch Doctor recommendations for the season. For your blood shards that you get for free from that challenge of cash you saved, you better have saved, you're going to roll mojos right there's only one possible mojo like wizard there's only one source there's only one mojo and it, it did get nerfed this season sadly that's why i made the witch doctor joke but witch doctor is still in the a tier in my opinion it's still really good solid build overall and the gazing demise crushes low level content like you wouldn't believe and like we talked about you have infinite mana at level 35 on top of that you have yourself a powerhouse of a character whether you want to use haunt pets Spirit Barrage or any combination of those. Let's talk about the Witch Doctor Hope of Cain, right? Remember you get one upgrade if you were good boys and girls and you saved your Challenge Rift Cash. Um, you would think, yeah, I'm gonna upgrade Ceremonial Knives. You're gonna try to get like the Dagger of Dart, the Barber, Sacred Harvester. There's some really good Ceremonial Knives you can get. But what you might not know is they buffed Zombie Charger, AKA Zombie Bear build, either last season or the season before that. These seasons go on so long, I don't even know what season it is anymore. But check it, there's only two spears you can get. One is the Empyrean Messenger, which is super garbo. And if you upgrade spears and get that, I'm sorry. But the other one is the Scrimshaw. Scrimshaw reduces the mana cost of Zombie Charger by 75% and increases its damage by six to seven times. So you have a 50-50 shot to get a multiplier. Now this isn't the best for leveling because you already have, you're the you're already the fastest class. I mean, you're from, to me, for massacres. I think Necro is the best for group or torment blasting, but for actually chaining kills together, you have haunt and your pets, it's amazing, right? So it's kind of like this messes up my whole synergy of doing massacre bonuses or whatever. But if you want to go into like T1 and just blast enemies with Scrimshaw, you definitely can. Not only is it a 50-50 chance to get the Scrimshaw, it synergizes perfectly with the Helltooth set. It works with the two-piece and the six-piece, which we're gonna get into in a minute. While leveling, these are some legendaries to look out for. You're already gonna be spamming Hunt. 
but you can get the Death Watch Metal, Heart of Iron, Harrington Waste Guard, Pox Vaults, and these really boost your damage overall. And if you don't have room for them, give them to your follower. Give your follower all these on-hit effects and everything like that as they change the way followers work this patch. You can fully deck out followers in all types of gear and they do get give you the benefit of certain legendary powers like Nemesis Bracers, Flavor of Time. I'll try to put a follower video in the description of this video, but definitely check my YouTube channel for it as it really walks you through how to build them and use them effectively. I'm not sure there's leveling implications um, for Witch Doctor and followers. Um, unless you're playing with Cormac, you can get five second cheat death immunity and, you know, for hardcore so you don't get clapped up. They all can give you a cheat death. They all can increase the damage you do to enemies by 10% and they all have their little quirks like whether it be cooldown on the Enchantress, healing on the Templar, and the Scoundrel gives you lots of crit. So this is what the starter build looks like. Big fat two-hander, Prononator to group up the mobs and put a damage dot on them. Those rabid poison dogs are beast. The gar cold gargantuan rune is beast. Uh, confidence ritual rule, you want to be close to do your damage. Graven Justice gives you CDR so you can spirit walk more. I like Severance because it gives you a nice boost of speed. Uh, Midnight Feast to give you another dog, so you have four dogs. I think there's other passives if you want to go full dog mode. You know, dog goes crazy. And then Creeping Death allows your haunts to basically stay forever. And with Lingering Spirit, it's just constantly looking for new targets. And the whole battlefield is just blanketed in haunts. And then also your Piranha NATO amplification lasts forever with it as well if you're fighting a Rift Guardian or something. So your goal is to use this build that doesn't have any Paragon, nothing in the cube, nothing like that. Farm on T1, you can even do lower to get your two piece. Your two piece is really important. We'll get into that in a second. I wanna show you um, a T1 demonstration. I'm gonna cast out my Gargs, I'm gonna cast out my dogs, and I probably won't do anything. Let's see. Come on, come on. Make me look good, guys, right? Like this is without Haunt, which is 4,000 damage or anything else. They had that poor little guy cornered. I almost feel guilty. So then you just kind of Haunt spam and you Severance around like so. And then you can group them up with Prana Nato and everything just as really cozy T1 build. And if you had Spirit Barrage, I'm gonna give you guys a Spirit Barrage build. That way you have something to build off of. You know, cause Spirit Barrage is great also. It's so definitely more active play style if you don't like this passive kind of pet summoner type build. It's kind of maybe kill an elite though. I haven't really showcased it too much here. So look how fast this elite's getting tracked. Just throw a few haunts on there and Goodbye, Elite. You had no chance. I would continuously spam Haunt. I'm just kind of showcasing the power of the build right here. So, since I didn't attack, he didn't die, but there you go. You can see it's pretty chill. And this would be a gazing to my start. If you get this at level one, you could throw it in the cube, or you can just hold it. Um, you get the full multiplier, whether you hold it or not, but you don't get that average damage. So, I would definitely cube it if I had the option there, but here's the build. Again, we have unlimited resource because of Rush of Essence, um, but it's not actually a problem. In the starter build, I don't think I even have Rush of Essence, right? Because it's just like, you don't run out of mana. Haunt only cost 50 when I have 750 mana here. So it's pretty cheap to spam. But for Spear Barrage, since you're casting nonstop here, look at my resource, it's gonna go down, down, and then eventually the pass is gonna start to take over and it's gonna normalize and then start to go up. There it is, right? So infinite spirit and this uh, this is requires no demonstration. Everyone knows spirit barrage is broken. Look at you even have the mana two above you just crushing everything. So whichever one you use, you're gonna eventually get your two piece Hadrig, and that's where things, if it didn't already take off, it's taken off even further, right? So enemies hit by your primary skills, your zombie dogs which are out, your gargantuan which is out, prana nato, all right, all that stuff is gonna take three thousand damage and become slowed. So not only was it already hitting hard, now you are doing tons of damage on top of that. And you have a 60% damage reduction with your four piece once you get it. So let's just do the GR20 clear. Let me take off these high level gems. I did add acid cloud in the two four piece setup just to hit more enemies, just to blanket the whole battlefield, cause why not? So we're here in the GR20 clear. Again, I'm just gonna bring my pets out. I'm gonna severance into the pack and pop soul harvest to get my damage reduction and then just start spamming my abilities like so now everything is just basically dotted for me from the dogs everywhere 
And you could actually haunt spam if you still wanted to, as it's really powerful. It just doesn't really synergize too well with everything, which is fine. I mean, we, we, we're doing good enough. I mean, there's 3,000 dot everywhere. It's one of the easiest GR20 clears you'll ever do. It kind of gives Roland a run for its money, to be honest, because it kind of requires less resource, less effort even. You're never really in harm's way. You just kind of set it and forget it, dot it and trot it. I don't know. So here's another elite. Let's kill this just to kind of prove our point here. Spam, spam, spam. You actually don't need to, but you know, I'm just ADD, I guess, sitting here doing nothing else. And you can see the GR20 clear is easy. We're not using any Paragon, anything like that. Nothing in the cube, just a kind of transparency, you know, that way you guys feel confident when you use my builds. Like everything is just with nothing for the starters. Congratulations, you go through, you get your six piece set bonus. Now you do 17,500 damage. The only difference now we have to have them affected by wall of death to get the damage from our six piece. Everything else is generally the same. You acid cloud spam, have your pets out. This absolutely crushes T7. We're going to do a test here on T7, um, but I do have some bad news. I mean, it doesn't scale as well as other sets. So you have no problem doing the T7. Like we said, let's go ahead and do what we did. Summon our pets, run out there. We're going to keep up soul harvest and we're going to spam everything. So this is pretty chill, right? Because 17,000 damage, like he's already dying, is no slouch. But it's not going to scale into T16 as well as other builds. So I'd maybe prioritize the Scrimshaw, maybe prioritize going uh, Mundanugu for speeds. So that's going to be your best speed build probably. Um, but yeah, you can use your DBs that you get towards Scrimshaw. That way you have a bigger multiplier to hit with like uh, zombie bears or something. But it is slow, you know. So I'd probably stick to T7 to T11, like that range. Um, and go for Mundanugu, right, for speeds. That's that's just what I would do. And then, you know, getting an Ingeom just for severance would, even with this build, would be so nice, right? Obviously, you can go Chicken Dock or something like that um, for speeds if you choose to do so. There's options. And um, I'll have a website, bloodshed.com, with torment, speed builds, bounty builds, push builds, all the builds for you guys to make it, make it better. And uh, again, I'm not saying it's bad, it's just, it's just not as fluid like you can't just take it and go crush all the content with it um there might not be that many hilltooths logging in gr70s before Rollins, before barbs is what i'm saying that's all i'm saying so if i was at this point i just did my hadrick i got my six piece i have like a mix of rare gear crappy gear i would probably use all my resources available on sets to get the money new set right and try to get the gazing demise offhand and I wouldn't even roll them at level 70. I probably would make a level one witch doctor, right? Because it, remember, it severely limits the item pool. And I'd roll for Mojas at level one just to, just to have it because every spend of your blood shard, every 25 that you're going through, you know, it might only take you one to three rifts. All that could go toward getting the Mundi set, right? Getting a set that's going to be more impactful. And the Mundanugu set doesn't require that much to get going. So that's what my path would be. Get that Mundi set, man. There are a lot of builds you can play with Witch Doctor and they definitely separated the leaderboards this time around. So you can be like overall rank 100 and then you can be rank 100 Jade and so forth. I do like Dagger of Darts a lot as well. I have all these builds on the website. If you wanna support the channel further, you can support on Patreon, Twitch. You can follow me on social media. Liking the video, hey man, liking the video goes a long way. Hitting the bell notification. Um, just jumping in stream and saying, hey blood, watch your video, man. GG. Hope you guys have a badass season this time around. I'm going to enjoy it. It's kind of like a solo follower centric season and I do play mostly solo so it works out great. That's going to be all for me today. This is Bloodshed and I'm out of here. Peace.